Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Mari and I'm gardening in Queens, New York City. And today I'm super excited to share with you the garden plan for the 2024 growing season. So I'm not only going to share with you the garden plans for this year, but I'm also going to guide you through my process. I have a small backyard garden in a rental apartment and I also have access to a bit of a bigger space about 10 minutes away from me. And today we're going to be planning both gardens. So the first thing with planning the garden is a good idea to draw out your space. If you don't have all the measurements and everything, you can just do it by hand, just visually and draw the way that you know your garden is. Or what I tried to do this year, I just went on Google Earth, put my address in there and then print an image of my backyard. So this is what my backyard looks like. I basically have this square here, there's a little patio, I have a raised bed here that was already in the apartment. There's a tree that gives me some shade in here and there's some space along the fence here that I like to do some containers. First thing I'm taking in consideration is sunlight. So my backyard here, I am lucky that I have a south facing backyard. So I receive lots of sunlight through the day and it gets very warm because I have lots of concrete surrounding me so it's a bit hotter and warmer the temperature outside than the forecast temperature on your phone usually says so I learned that but at the plot for instance and the front yard they're both north facing so it's a completely different thing even though we're in the same neighborhood we have different conditions that affect that so the plot this is the orientation it's north facing what means that the sun actually comes behind all of these buildings here go that way. So I have sunrise in here, it goes all the way here, then gets super blocked by the tall buildings that I have on the street in the afternoon. So the plots usually completely shade in the afternoon, even in the summer. But the advantage is I get some early morning sun in the spring, which kind of heats up the space a little faster. It's hard to draw when it's like this in the angles, but it's just helpful to know about your sun situation. So what I did too, I just moved around and printed straight, so it's easier for me to draw. And I ended up drawing this. So after you have everything drawn, you have our base map ready. It can be as simple as you want. Then we're going to start thinking about our goals. My goal for this year is to have a productive abundant garden i want to grow nutritious and flavorful food but i also want to introduce beauty and aesthetics and i can accomplish that by adding beautiful colorful flowers and with that i also encourage the production of my vegetable garden because i am also encouraging pollinators and wildlife to come to my garden too and beneficial insects so if i have different plants different flowers the whole variety of beneficial insects they also help me with pest control inevitably you're going to attract all kinds of bugs to your garden the ones that are not super helpful like cucumber beetles or the vine borers or tomato hornworms but you can also attract their predators you can attract ladybugs that love eating aphids you can have lace wigs and wasps that will take care of some of the other bugs too i like to encourage birds to the plot because birds also eat little bugs and some little caterpillars and larvae and stuff like that. I've many times seen in the plot they're coming, they're you know, they're scratching the soil, they're picking in there, or they're just going to plant and start picking in there. So that's a good thing. And for that, I like to plant maybe seed producing crops like sunflowers and keep it, keeping beauty in mind and mental health, to be honest, it's tough to live in a city that is so gray like New York and so competitive. So for my own well-being, I really want to grow more flowers in my backyard. I have learned that you can grow a lot of food in a small space. In 2022, I grew a lot more produce and vegetables that we could handle eating it. We shared with neighbors, we canned, we preserved, we fermented, we pickled, but we still had too much. And to be honest, it felt a bit overwhelming. So that's something I also keep in mind on my garden planning this year. I want to produce enough, obviously some to share because it's the fun part of the garden too is to get you know connected with people and share what you grow but not so much that now adds so much to my routine that makes me super overwhelmed leading me to a burnout in the summer that's not what i want i want this garden to be a pleasurable space i want this garden to be my refuge to be a place that i go to calm my mind you know to feel connected with nature to appreciate beauty and to also give me some food you know some nutritious food but just enough food i decided with that in the plot to only grow half of the plot with vegetables and the other half with flowers. Diversity is also important for me, so grow, growing vegetables and flowers, I want to support the wildlife here in New York. I'll be honest with you, when I first moved to the city and I started gardening, I was afraid I was not gonna get bees. It's like, I'm gonna have to hand pollinate everything because the bees not gonna come. I was wrong. 
There's tons of parks and lots of flowers everywhere that there are many pollinators and bugs and birds and little animals that will come to your garden too, which is good and I appreciate that and I want to encourage that. So diversity is important. So I want to also introduce some native plants to my area to create some resilience. Those plants tolerate my climate well, they're accustomed to it and thrive in the space that I'm growing. Also attract lots of these native insects and birds that depend on them to survive. So last but not least, I want to make a bit of a lower maintenance garden. Sometimes if you just let yourself go like I did and plant everything everywhere, thinking that half of them are going to die because you know you don't know what you're doing. But instead, all of them grow and thrive and produce a million things. And now you're in a space that you're overwhelmed and you don't know what to do and then your garden grows bigger than you. You know, you can't have enough time in the week to go there in tame it. So now the vines are growing everywhere. You have weeds everywhere. The fruits are falling and trucking the produce that you don't want to. It can get a bit overwhelming. So I want to have a place that it's possible for me to manage by myself. To account with the realistic amount of time that I have to dedicate to my garden. Okay, now that we talked about goals, let's talk about the fun part, our plant selection. I have put a lot of thought of selecting my plants to the garden this year. My first criteria was I want to grow most of the things that I already have. Because I did get too excited in my first years of gardening, I bought way too many seeds. I can probably have a farm with the amount of seeds that I have. So I did my very best to not order anything this year. I did one seed order, which I shared with you guys in the past video, but there was very little. It was four packages of seeds only. and. I still have a lot of seed left, so I ended up with this much for my summer garden, all varieties that I have already on, and I have already started a lot of my cool season vegetables. So part of your plant selection will also depend, you know, on you knowing your zone and your climate and your first and last frost date. So here in New York City, in Queens, we are zone 7B. I know a lot of people changed their zones this year, but that stayed for us the same. 7B we have the urban heat island effect here too which makes us about 10 degrees hotter than our surrounding areas. We're very hot and humid in the summer. We have a good average rainfall. New York has an, about a 50 inch a year average rainfall, which is pretty good. You can kind of rely on rain to water the garden too. And then your restrictions. Okay, you make a wish list. I love to grow all this. I'm gonna think about it. I love myself to grow onions and garlic and potatoes and all of that, but I have to deal with possibly contaminated soil here. So those are not going to go in the ground for me. I still have a chance to grow them because I have vertical planters, but also onions are so cheap at the supermarket that I don't want to give some precious space, put that in my small garden when I could do tomatoes, for instance, that I can taste a ginormous difference between homegrown tomatoes and supermarket tomatoes. The onions, I will definitely grow them when I have a bigger home one day in the future, but for now it's just not worth it for me. So if you're in an urban area, you might have to think of contaminated soil. You can get your soil tested if you want. They can be a bit pricey, especially if you're testing for heavy metals. So I've learned here from a few classes I've taken that you can just assume it's contaminated and take some precautions to not pass that to your food. So one of the things that you can do is only grow above the ground plants. So you grow things that fruiting plants that grow up. So tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, they will grow up the stem. You can trim the bottom leaves, give a good space between the soil and the leaves, hopefully mulch it so you prevent spice back from this rain and then your harvest is going to be off the top. The plants itself won't uptake a lot of the toxins in the roots from what I've learned, so it's still okay to plant fruiting plants like that, but not really good to plant things that have direct contact with the soil, like root vegetables, leafy greens, etc. On top of that, I have a rat problem. Oh, I had a rat problem last year, let's say. They finally found my garden last year. We were gone for a month and the garden got no maintenance. Got a little bushy and weedy and gave them the perfect space to go and make their nest at. And it was a bit of a battle to be able to take them out. I almost gave up on gardening there. But then I took a class about managing rats in urban gardens and that gave me more confidence to try again this year. I know to implement a few things to discourage them from coming to my garden to begin with, which will be also the same thing, giving space between the plants. They like places that they can hide or the low hanging things, touching the soil. If you're trying to prevent rats and rodents, don't do that. Try to plant things that are high and get some space between the soil and the plant. Obviously you can plant some smaller things like a little marigold or something like that. They'll be a bit bushier, but make sure there's enough space that you can see what's going on around that they can't hide or get triggered to dig and make their burrows in there. 
so I will not over plant it so much also I tend to plant a lot but I need to kind of leave it a little bit more spare this year so I can see what's going on and discourage these rats to go back possibly there so the little ones that were born there the year before don't come back anyway so those are my restrictions I have written in here the plants that I plan to grow I also have the varieties in here it's just in a separate box but I wanted to have it together with the same drawing of the garden plan but I'm only gonna go over today the main uh, cultivars which all the, the plants are and where they're gonna go I'll make another video later explaining each variety that I'm planning to grow so this video is not too long but I wanted to keep in here just for my own reference so tomatoes are the ones that we like growing the most I did grow way too much of it in 2022 so this year we narrowed down to 10 plants of the big tomatoes and four plants of the cherries. My 10 tomato plants are going to leave in the plot garden and I'm only going to dedicate two beds for tomatoes this year. So this one over here and this one over here is going to be for tomatoes. I'm gonna write it in here. And the reason why I picked those two beds is because I'm trying a different trellising system. I want to put some kind of connect this fence to these arches here and try to trellis my tomatoes that way I will show that to you guys with the growing season coming I'll make a video about it but on the year that I had my good tomato year in 2022 my plants tended to become way too big for what I had and flop over so I'm trying to make sure I have a trellis that's tall enough to support all of their healthy growth this season and I'm going to keep the cherry tomatoes close by me here on my backyard and I'll grow them in buckets and containers. Moving on to the next beds, we're gonna grow peppers here this year, right next to the tomatoes. Right here, I want to grow eggplant, so I want peppers, tomatoes and eggplant close together. The reason why too, it's because this side of the garden is the sunniest side. We have buildings behind here and this gets shaded first and then shades here. So this usually receives the most amount of sunlight. So I'm going to put a lot of the really heat loving plants on this side over here. Now this part used to be our compost and I'm turning that into a three sister garden bed this year. Probably want to do uh, maybe three six okras in here because since this is going to be a three sister bed so three sisters are corn squash and beans I'm gonna do corn maybe ten corns and then I want to do two squashes this year a big squash in here and a big squash in here those are going to be winter squashes I want this one here which will be a bigger one kind of send its leaves and sort of act a bit like mulch and they'll help shading the soil a little bit because they have prickly leaves they kind of keep the little small creatures away mammals and stuff so that's what i want to see if it works for me in the garden this year too they block the sun keep the soil moist and also hopefully avoid some of the rodents to walk around everywhere and they are adapted to the climate that we're growing so i want to give it a try one more time and that would be mostly the plants that grow up the squash is an exception but the squash i think is still the leaves are spare enough and prickly enough that will actually deter the rats instead of attracting them we'll see we'll find out also, I have a vine borer problem here. Vine borers, there are flying bugs that will put an egg in the leaf of the squash and then this larva will hatch and go inside the stem. If the stem is hollow, it will make a borer in the stem and damage the plant. So that happened to me every year I tried to grow squash here. But then I learned that if I let my squash sprawl down on the ground, they can send a set of advantageous roots. So where the stem touches the ground, they will root in there and also help the plant give it more nutrients and becoming stronger. So if it does get affected by a vine borer in a different location, they still be able to grow. So we'll see, let's see if it works. Obviously I'm not super comfortable having my squash touched in the soil because of our problem with contamination. But I am thinking that I might try to cover them with stockings or something and also they have a hard shell right and they have a hard outer layer so i'll just make sure that i peel it before i eat it because i know that it could have been contaminated too with the contact with the soil with this first trellis here i want to grow a vining plant so i'm growing a magnolia tender pea so it's a purple pea that has sort of a strong vining habit and it will grow early i want to have this filled up a little bit earlier in the season and i'll be able to harvest some peas from that too and then on the second one, I'm going to grow some long beans, which I really like to eat. And I think they will look very nice in the trellis too. I really hope that they can fill that up and make it look very pretty this year. I'm growing actually pole beans on the three sister bed too, but those are going to be 
using the corn as their support to grow upright. This area here is heavily shaded, so I'm thinking to put some flowers in here because they, the veggies usually tend to require more sun. Flowers will do better if they have sun, of course, but they will tolerate a bit more shade than the vegetables. And but I don't need them to produce fruits, so they can still do okay with a bit of shade on them. I still get six hours of full sun here in the morning. I have a fig tree in here that also gives me a lot of shade. It was already planted by my neighbor's father when he used to garden there. And then there's a grapevine that was also planted by him many, many years ago. It's very strong and established and it kind of takes over everywhere. So this year I'm going to learn more about growing grapes and try to manage it better. There's some maybe things in here like potatoes. I said I can't grow them in the ground, but I have grown them in buckets before and had good success with them. So I might put buckets of potatoes right here on this side. And this year are going to be cool flowers. So I have started already all of these cool flowers. This is the entrance of the garden and I want the entrance of the garden to look very pretty. So I want to try to put cut flowers here. I have pictures of my flowers in here. Those are the flowers that I have started for my cool season garden and hopefully all of them will do well. So far only the poppy right here haven't germinated so I might not have that. I also want to dedicate this area here of the plot for flowers as well to attract more pollinators. On the next bed I have rudbeckias that I'm not sure if they're going to come back or not this season so I'm going to wait for them and see if they will come back before I make a plan for the space. I loved growing flowers last year and as I said I want to dedicate the whole half of the plot to that. That will be very helpful also with pollinators and hopefully help us out a little bit more with pest control. I'm planning to maybe grow some cucumbers right next to the arch as well, but I haven't decided yet. I still have to think about it. And that will be it for the plot. I'm planting the things that I can't grow in the ground because of the contaminants and my restrictions being in an urban area in containers. Right here in my backyard. So it's in clean soil, safe above the ground, and you'll still be able to enjoy those varieties too. So I have two green stalks that live right here that I plan to do one with brassicas or cool season crops. So they'll have cauliflower, broccoli, kale, and maybe some flowers and herbs. Another green stalk that I'm not going to plant in the spring, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to plant with hot peppers when time comes around May. Then I have my greens over here by my door because it's easy for me to access and I eat greens all the time, so I wanted to keep it up here and that's going to be planted very early too, maybe even this month, let's see, depending on the weather. And I have a frost cover for that so I can plant them out and cover them so they can start getting acclimated outside too. And then down here, I'm also growing container-friendly varieties, so they'll be a bit smaller than the ones that I'm growing in the plot. I'm planning to do some cherry tomatoes that do well in containers, maybe some summer squash, which doesn't get as big as a big vining winter squash, a little eggplant variety that's smaller as well, and a few other things around here. I think I'm going to do some peas in here, some more snap peas, some snap peas in here, build a little tippet trellis. I want to do some spinach extra on this space as well, long planter that I have because I don't think I'm going to have space for spinach or my green stock. I already started too many things for it. And then I'll leave two of those open because I want to be able to change my mind. I am thinking to do one with cucumbers and potatoes, but I also want to have some flexibility with this. I have a lot more pots here. I have pots, enough pots to go all over here and all over here too, but I'm trying to also think of aesthetics this year and then to have this as a place that I can have people over so I can invite my friends, we can enjoy the garden, maybe do some cooking, put a table here in the middle. So I'm trying to downsize it, the amount of pots that I have in the backyard a bit too. And my backyard bed would be all flowers for two reasons. First, for joy and enjoyment and for cultivating beauty, having a beautiful place for me to go to when I'm stressed out about living in the city, but also because I have a problem with alley cats that come to my garden, they visit and they use this as a little box. And I also could take the same approach as the plot and then only grow things that grow up, you know, like tomatoes and peppers, but I already have lots of them growing there. I don't need more. So I decided to dedicate the whole bed to my favorite flowers, which are dahlias. So I have printed here the varieties that I already have. I tried to save my dahlia tubers from last year and they're doing good in storage so far. So the ones that have survived storage up to this point are these ones over here. So this is the selection that I have. I'll try to see if I remember all of them by name. So the first one is Diva and then I have Peaches and Cream. This is Cafe Au Lait, Ferncliff Spice, Linda's Baby, Sweet Natalie, Feline Ivone, Cornell Browns, Breakout, 
Colorado Classic. I don't particularly like this one, but she survived, so I'm gonna grill her again. I don't really like the color. Marn Dahlia, and this one's called Boom Boom White, I believe. So, this is my Dahlia selection for my bed that I hope to also be the background of my videos, hopefully, during the gardening season. That would look very nice to have some beautiful flowers behind me when I'm filming, so also that's one of the goals. So you guys can enjoy some beauty too while you're watching the videos. And I'll have a few flowers in front of it too as a border, but those are mostly the varieties that I'm growing. And I actually might be getting lots of new tubers from another gardener here in New York City from Brooklyn, and she's being very generous and say that if her tubers survive stories, she will also share some with me. So I'll talk about the varieties once they come. And everybody loves dahlias apparently because I had a bit of a problem in the plot last year of people getting in to take them. So I'm not growing any dahlias at the plot this year. But I'm also doing a little experiment for me, for fun. I've been very inspired by Florette. I'm not sure if you guys watch her channel. She has a beautiful farm on the West Coast. I will put a link to her channel in the description box below. She breeds flowers now. And I've been, you know, getting my hands into also saving seeds and trying to grow things from seed. And I collected dahlia seeds from my own dahlias last year and I'm planning to do a little dahlia printing experiment on the front yard of my building this year because I live in a very busy street and I have lots of people that commute to the train pass through my building here and they always compliment the flowers when I was growing flowers there they always say they brighten up the day they will come take these routes so they could see the flowers so I want to make sure that I grow some beautiful flowers in there too just for the well-being of the community to help out with people that might be having harder days here in New York too so that's where I'm gonna plant a bunch of dahlia seedlings. So I wanna isolate them from the dahlias that I have here uh, in case I wanna save seed again because a lot of them are gonna be open face and I prefer the double varieties. And if that's getting too advanced, let me just turn back a notch and just explain a few things. Like dahlias are usually grown by tubers, so they are clones of the plant. So let's say these beautiful plants over here, they will produce seed, but they have tubers underneath that we can dig up and plant again and divide and they will come back to the same plant uh, that you're seeing over here. So you plant in the same plant basically over and over again. But if you save seeds from it, if you let the flowers stay in the plant, get pollinated and mature, they will also produce seed. And if you save seeds from it, each seed will give you a new different dahlia. So dahlias are not true to type. Like if I save a seed, let's say from stock, right? This plant here that I have on my vase. That let's say it didn't get cross-pollinated, so I have all this purple stock growing, just this, and then I save seed. If this is an open-pollinated variety, I most likely will end up with the same plant if I plant them again next year. With dahlias, because of the way their genetics work, they have a lot more combinations of genes that can happen, they will actually, each seed will give you a different plant. And that's how new varieties are discovered. And then we have this amazing selection of varieties too. So if you find a flower that you like from a seed that you planted, they will also produce tubers. You save the tuber and then now you get your own cultivar to call, you know, whatever you want and to grow in your gardens too. So I want to kind of give a little try here in the garden too. I did plant some dahlias from seed last year and it was so fun to just wait and see what they'll turn up. It was all different from each other so it gave me a lot of joy and uh, I had so much fun so I want to do that in the front yard and I know that's not everyone's cup of tea so I might not talk about it so much here in the channel as you want to so let me know in the comment section down below if you'd be interested but I will be doing my seedling experiment with lots of my homegrown collected seeds from last year in the front yard this year so that's mostly what I have for the garden planning I'm going to take some time now to put what I have drawn in here in paper as well and also make a little rough draft of the backyard garden so here's how I do it I would try to actually trace it I'll do it in here so I can take notes on this side as well so just going to see if I can follow these lines. I could use my ruler to do this, but let's just do a free hand so it doesn't need to be super precise. Just off the physical structures, all the green stalks because they already live there, but these pots can be moved and my bed, it's, I can't move either. It's there, this pear tree also is here to stay. So I have to account for that as well. So now we're just going to trace it. I will always uh, roll it because my drawing is not very steady. So I just look, look a little better since I have the ruler here. So now I'm kind of going to lightly follow the form here. And you know, it's not going to be perfect, but it's already helpful. 
Um, I will do another video with a detailed like placement of the dahlias in this bed if you're curious. And then on the plot too, maybe with spacing, but just so much to talk about in one video. You know, this is just the first draft and there's also something that it's good to keep in mind that things change during the season. Having some flexibility is also good. So things are going to evolve depending on what seeds germinate and what things are happening at the time there are planting things in the garden. So this is just like a baseline and we will evolve from there. But they're here, so now we have the backyard but also we, i have a pot in here with a trellis that i plan to grow peas i already know that these are gonna get my greens spinach it's just easy like rough draft or everything i have two green stalks in here one i'm just gonna write here warm season and cool season peppers and herbs broccoli cauliflower and kill probably some flowers around too to fill up all the pockets because there's lots of pockets on these guys that is are going to be most of this part i do get some shade from this gate on this little area here it gets heavily shaded so i'm not putting any dahlias here but mostly all of this it's going to be dahlias and on the edges in here i'll put some smaller flowers just so it looks nice for some visual interest i already have some echinacea growing around here which is good they're native flowers and i have some scabiosa perennial and what else do I have? I have some back here that I'm not sure if it's going to come back this year or not, but well, we'll see. If not, I'll just replant with some that I have started. This also serves as my husband's garage. So when he can't find space to park outside, he will park inside. So his big car, it's taking all this space here. But once the car is not in, I put it, we put a little table with two little chairs. And that's where... You know, I kind of tend to hang out in the morning before I go to work or come in with my coffee when it's warm and plan my day and sit down in the garden for about 10 minutes. It's my favorite way to start the day. This year, we've got some fold-out tables here too. I want to do some more outdoor cooking. I have some fire pits that we're going to put out. So hopefully, we can have a little bit more fun at the garden too. So that's the plan. Lots of things going on. The next video coming up would be talking about the varieties that I'll be growing this year with more detail. And I also want to talk about when I'm going to put them in the garden. I know I did not give any measurements for this. I actually have the measurements for the plot and for the backyard. I just couldn't find it. I will talk about it in a future video too, I promise. If you made it all the way through, all the way to the end to this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I'd love for you to like this video and put a comment in the comment section too, saying that you stayed here until the end and watched the whole thing. Let me know about your garden plants if you plant anything fun and exciting for the garden season this year and if you want to give an advice for growing in zone 7b if you are in new york city also like me and you want to also share something that i missed or want to say something else that you have experience with please put that in the comment section down below so this video can be helpful for more people and if you're curious about the seeds that i have started already i will link a couple videos in here with my cool season flowers and the cool season vegetables and that's it thank you so much for watching today i hope you're having a great day i hope you're getting excited about this new growing season too and i'll see you next time